Hi everyone. Today we are going to be reviewing the uh, Owan HDS2202S handheld oscilloscope. I'm on the Owan page here. This is the, under the handheld oscilloscopes. It's this bottom model right here. It's 200 megahertz. Let's go to the uh, actual uh, brochure on it. So it's the HDS 200 series oscilloscopes. This is a three three um, deal machine here. It's an oscilloscope, a multimeter, and a waveform generator. It, so it's multifunction all in one. It's got a three and a half inch high resolution, high contrast color LED display. It is it does work really good in the outdoors in the sun too. I was kind of surprised at that. It's got an 18650 lithium batteries um and it does have good good battery support it says it can last three to six hours i i think i had it on for like four and a half hours so i know it's good for that long it has usb type c um interface which is how i have it hooked up to the um, computer and i'll show you where to download that and how to hook it up yeah it, it's okay if if this is your first scope and everything and you want to put it on your computer, you can. I'll also um, send you a good direction of a guy that looks like he's worked quite a bit on the online stuff. I'm used to a lot different computer programs on the oscilloscope. So to me, uh, I just, I hate to say anything bad about anything, so I'm not good at So it's okay. It works. You can see your signals. So maybe you'll like it. Um, does have a self calibration function where you just want to unplug everything. Um, it supports SCPI supported. So let's just scroll down to this. And if you want to go right to the oscilloscope, of course, you can just skip forward. So suitable for outdoor just tells you all the stuff right there. Mobile phone body. So it's the same size they're saying as the mobile phone. It's a two. Two channel, 200 megahertz, and it is a. It's a it's a 20,000 count multimeter, so that that is actually not too bad. It's this bottom one right here, so one giga sample, 200 megahertz, and 20,000 count multimeter, and the, it's got a 25 hertz uh, signal generator on it. Now you can't make your own signals or import signals, but it does have a signal generator, which that means something. This whole thing, this whole scope right now, I think it's about $310, $310 or something like that. So these are the, the oscilloscope functions, dual channel input, bandwidth up to 200 megahertz, real-time sampling, one gigahertz, one giga sample, max 8K record length, cursor measurements function. It does have cursors, um, horizontal and vertical. Multiple auto measurements functions. It's got X and Y function. One key auto set function. Easy to detect and debug. Um, here's the multimeter. So it has 20,000 count true RMS. So it's got four digits. Voltage current resistant. It does have diode capacitance and continuity testing. Auto range functions. Easy to detect. Max AC 750 volts. DC. 1000 input voltage independent input multimeter and oscilloscope reading hold function relative measurement function now, i'm not going to deal too much with the multimeter but it it's not the fastest multimeter in the world but it is pretty it's pretty precise it's not really a bad multimeter so if you need a multimeter and an oscilloscope and a waveform generator all in one it's not really too bad actually Okay, so it does have the plastic coated BNC connections. Waveform generator on top. That's this right pin right here. These one and two for your oscilloscopes. Here's your calibration signal right there. That's your USB C for charging. And if you want to display it on the computer, it does charge really fast too. It's got a good battery system in it. Uh, what else do they want to tell you here? Multimeter input connections on the bottom. Tells you the length, the size, excellent power management. I'll agree with that. Works well. 
Uh, it's got a hangable bracket on it. Here's the oscilloscope performances, two acquisition modes. Does have a save save function too, where you can save your waves right here. Reference waveform, four waveform images, four CSV file or waveform files. So it's pretty it's a pretty nice little scope actually. Waveform generator functions, O1 series handheld, and this just gives you the uh, the specs of the different model. And like I said, the one we're looking at this is one over here on the far right. Does not have any um, decoding feature on it though for reading UART or any of that kind of stuff, which is fine. And if you guys are using this and you find anything that I read here to be untrue, make sure and leave it in the comments so everybody knows. This is what it what it comes with here. It comes with a nice little bag, charging cable, probe adjust screwdriver. Uh, multimeter leads one probe and BNC uh, alligator clip connector okay and I'll try to remember to zoom in on this website because their their websites are kind of hard to find this this right here this page is where you download you can download the user manual application software this right here is where this PC software for OON H HDS 200 series digital oscilloscope, that is where I downloaded the computer software for that. And that's when you can also update your firmware. And let's see, I don't remember. Yep, this is just showing that same page again. Because I, I honestly, I did have a hard time finding that. But if you do look in the owner's manual, it, it tells you uh, what page to go to. Okay, so here's the the scope software that I have running and let's see over here on the right um, man it's been a couple days since I had a chance to go through this but it's it's an okay little uh, little program up on the top here you do have some features yeah this is your uh, let's see something here it's your grid lines your data lines just remember when you have it on data lines it's going to be well okay there we go when you have it on data points it's going to be hard to see because i think this one actually came on data points and it was zoomed way out and it was hard to see so you definitely want it to have it on your data line up here and these are just your grid lines to put in there this tells you your channel right now i only have one channel on if you had two channels on you could select them down here in the bottom Here's your, um, this is your scale for your uh, time. And below that you have, the, so you, you have quite a few on your time here. And then these, are, this is your scale for your volts right here. Okay. And then right now I have it set up to where it's, um, getting a signal all the time. Let's see if I unplug this, let's see how long it takes to. Uh... Okay. So that's actually pretty real time there. That's not actually too bad. I thought it was doing more like a recording type thing, but down here you go view. You can do all the same things that I was telling you up there. Here's your format, um, communication. This is where you can stop. It's the same right here is where you can stop the communication. And then when you start it up and if you want to have it on constant continue, you'll want to push right here. If you just want to get data, you can push right there. And this is your port setting. So it wasn't, uh, yeah, I have it set up for waveform right there. It wasn't too bad to hook up actually. What, what you're going to be able to do with this though, there is a, uh, let's see where we found the, um, okay, here's where our cursors right here. So here's, where we can add the horizontal cursors. And there's, you got your measurements up here on the, on the top, you got your, um, Y1 and Y2, and you got your Delta above that. So your Delta is going to be both of them. So if we bring them together, we should go, yep, that's your Delta. And this is your horizontal. And if we go to vertical, then we can do that. And I think we can put all on too. Yeah. If you go to the next one there, 
and, and you have all your measurements up here. So this this is not bad, and it's kind of nice if you if you want to do screen captures or something like that. It's not bad. So, anyways, that's how you use it. Um, let's go to. Okay, so if you go to on YouTube, it's called the channel's called the H W Cave, and the name it's called Number One Hundred Six Video Getting Data from the Owan. Now he's using a different model, an older model. It's like about two years old. HDS two seven two S scope meter. So he's he's using an older oscilloscope, but he goes over it a lot more and how everything works. So you should probably go if you if you're interested in getting one of these scopes. You want to be able to use it on the computer, you should probably go and look at his video there. So let's go through the operation of the um, oscilloscope. Like I said, it's laid out pretty well. It's pretty easy to use. There are a couple of little quirks on the software, on the pages getting around, but it's not too bad actually. So just let's just start out with, right now I have it hooked up number one to the signal generator. So let's go ahead and turn the, right now we have it in the oscilloscope mode. So if we push the mode button, we'll put it into the, that's your multimeter. And it is a four count or 20 count multimeter. So it's kind of nice. Let's push it one more time and we'll go into the oscilloscope or not the oscilloscope, but the signal generator part of the scope. So right now, um, it's like, it looks like it's displaying a sine wave. Uh, one, one volt peak to peak and zero offset. So we could push this button right here on the left and that'll take us to uh, different types of uh, waveform, square and ramp. So we can just keep going through. Uh, there's the arbitrary uh, part of it right here. We'll keep going. Okay, so back to sign. So let's go back to the arbitrary. And when we get to arbitrary, then we'll be able to actually, let's see which one we push here to go to arbitrary. Now, what we have to do is we have to push one of these arrows right here. So right now we're up there in the frequency. And we can change your frequency right there. Now how you do it is you push these arrow buttons to get around in the, freq in the different settings. So if I wanted to change this to 2, I would just up arrow that. If I wanted to go over and change it to 2.1, then I would over arrow once and then push up there. So let's put that back. Let's put that back to one uh, kilohertz. Now, if I want to go down to the type of different arbitrary waveforms that you can pick, though, I'm going to need to hit one of these big arrows here. So the, the arrows down here let you go inside your line, and then this is going to let you go down to the other parts of it. So right now we're in stairs right there, okay? So if we push, looks like it, if, we just, if you look at these blue buttons, they line up with whatever is underneath there. So if we push, um, there's where we can change the the setting on stairs on. So if we go back here, and it says there's three pages available that, so you can change that on your stair setting there. So we push that back to there. Okay, now we're on the now we're on the first of the third screen on the stairs. Push it again. We're on the second of the third screen. Push it again. We're on the third. Let's go back to the first screen, and we're and when we're highlighted there. We should be able to push this and go, yeah, we can push that arrow button down or up to go through these different um, arbitrary waveforms that you can pick in there. And there's quite a few. And then if you wanted to change when, when, you, when you're on one of the arbitrary waveforms, if you did want to go back up and make a change to one of them, then you could do that too. Now we're on third, like I said, we're on one of three pages there. So it's, it's kind of nice. Let's. Let's get back out of there, okay? So to get back out of there, we would go, let's see, which one we push here. We could hit exit there. That's your back button, exit. Then we could hit waveforms again. And then that would take us back out of there. Now we're back on the sine wave. And if we look up there, see where it says one off? That just means we have the sine wave turned off right now. And you see this um, red light here. Now, the other power button, when you're charging it, that'll turn red. And I think it goes to green when it's done charging. But so our waveform generator is actually turned on now. And you see one off there. So if we turn this on, 
then it should turn that waveform generator on, okay? So it's kind of neat to have your own waveform generator built in, especially if you want to do some tests and stuff. So now let's go ahead, if we push it one more time, the mode button, then we're going to go to the oscilloscope part of the tool. So now we're at the oscilloscope. So if we push mode again, we're going to go to the multimeter. If we push mode again, we're going to go to the waveform generator. And if we push mode again, we'll go back to the oscilloscope. Now that's actually the wave that we're putting out from the arbitrary waveform generator. So if I went back to there and then turn that off, then went back to the oscilloscope, see how the wave is flat there and the wave disappeared. So if I go back to the, the wave generator, turn that back on, go back one punch to the oscilloscope, there's that wave that we're putting out there. Now, when you try to get around in the scope itself, if you look up here, that tells us, um, here's our channel right here. That's channel one that's getting displayed right there in the blue. So if we push two, now we push channel one and two button. So that's channel one is on. Push it again, that's channel two. And channel two is, uh, so if we want to move from, right now we're in our time cursors, okay? So they're vertical. And if I want to move A, I can, it's set on A right now, so now I'm moving A. If I want to move B, I can move B by pushing B and then pushing there. If I want to move them both, I can do there. Now, if I want to go back over to the voltage cursors, I can just push there and go to channel one. Now I'm back on the voltage side of the uh, cursors. And if I push right here, now I'm going to move A, B, and then if I do here, I'm going to do the delta reading on, on both the cursors, okay? So also, we, we do have a lot of measurement settings on here. And let's go back to, um, let's go back to the page right here. Let's go to measure. And then as we go through here, we're measure on channel one. And we can go ahead and go add here. And then, like, if we want to put the frequency on channel one, because that's the one we're selecting, I can click frequency. I can go down a page. So I'm on one of four. Go down a page. I can put peak to peak here. I can continue on to page three, look at the rest of them. Page four. Then I'm going to be back at one. So if you notice down here on the bottom, or right there, that's what I added. I added that um, frequency, and I added the um, voltage peak to peak with our measure settings. <clears throat> so hopefully that's pretty much run you through everything you'd need to know on how to use this little oscilloscope. Like I said, <clears throat> it is quite capable. I wish I had it longer because I'd definitely be able to show you guys some projects and some testing procedures with it. But there you go. Thanks a lot.